up the cash, you got nowhere to be. And you go, and you go, and you go, and you go, go, go. Go, go, go. Then you run out of soul. Out of soul. Don't know what to do. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Renee Collins, and you are listening to the second installment broadcast of a show called Overtones on WLXU 93.9 LPFM Lexington. And I am Renee Collins, your host. Each week at this time on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m., this show will bring you the listening audience, the very best in local musicians, local venues, and those who support musicians. Local organizations also that promote music education in this great city of Lexington that has to offer the fans of music in this area and beyond. Uh, This song, as I mentioned last week, is the new theme song for Overtones, and it was performed by Brother Smith, who was a winner last night at the Lexington Music Awards for Best Pop Band. And that is one of our topics of the show today. Other topics we're going to talk about is Red Barn Recap, bringing you a rundown of the McLean Family Band's most exceptional performance last Wednesday on Red Barn Live. We will also talk about Red Barn Roundup, and we have Magnolia Boulevard. Um, We have Ryan Allen and Greg Irwin from the band today to talk about their performance on the upcoming show. So last night... The Lexington Music Awards were held at the Lyric Theater with an all-star cast of performances and nominees and winners. And it was just a wonderful recognition for all of our local musicians, technicians, venues. And to break all of this down today, we have in the studio my, as we call in the business world, subject matter experts. So you all are SMEs this morning. (laughs) SMEs. And we have... Actually, we have, uh, first of all, Matt Wickstrom um, to be a sidekick with me. And Matt is the host of a show that's on WLXU on Wednesday mornings from 9 to 10. Um, the name of the show is Wix Picks. Let's give a round of applause for Matt Wickstrom this morning. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And also to break it down, we have the lovely Whitney Akey who was a triple winner last night at the Lexington Music Awards. And I'm pretty sure if we would have had a red carpet competition, you would have won the Fashion Award. Oh, thank you. Your dress was absolutely beautiful. Everybody was raving about it in the audience. Just beautiful. And we have organizer and ceremony extraordinaire, David McLean. Let's give David a round of applause. I, I just want to say my dress was better than Whitney. <laughs> it was. It, it was. I'll, well, Splash of Green that. was a big hit. I really <laughs> liked it. Also in the studio today, we have Vanessa Davis, who was a double nominee for Music Educator and Pop Act with us here. So we'll give him a round of applause. And then to kind of close it out, we have Greg Irwin and Ryan Allen, the guitarist and keyboardist for the great Magnolia Boulevard. By the way, winner of the rock category last night. Yeah. So wonderful. Let's give them a round of applause. So let's break down the Lexington Music Awards first. And Matt, you can chime in here wherever you want. Um, We're going to talk about the talent. But first, let's talk uh, to David McLean. And we also have Whitney chiming in here as well. So David is uh, quite the industrious person. And before you talk about the Lexington Music Awards, would you mind breaking down for us all of the many things that your life is about and what it represents outside of the Lexington Music Awards? This outside morning? of the Lexington Music Awards. Well, we, we have um, Skinny Devil Music Lab is kind of the umbrella for all the 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 various Skinny Devil projects, like Skinny Devil Booking. We book a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of different shows and whatnot, and and uh, even including the spinoff from the, the Lexington Music Awards, LexiFest Concert Series, and LexiFest Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, we have um, the Academy of Guitar. We have um, just uh, I don't know. I could talk all day. We, <laughs> we just know. we just you really you know, could. We we just do all sorts of things, trying to provide lots of opportunities for for musicians and whatnot. And of course, I I record. Um, and perform and, and back up other artists and all that kind of wonderful stuff too. So 
Well, we're the wonderful bene- beneficiaries of your talent, David. Well, and we're just I just yeah. very, very appreciative of all you do for the community. Just trying to do my part, trying to keep up. Well, uh, Matt, uh, you kind of saw the nominees list, and mm-hmm. what is your kind of take on what you observed from the people that were nominated, and how do you think that contributes to the wonderful music scene that you write about quite often in Lexington? Um, well, I think I, I was excited to see a very diverse list of nominees, um, both a lot of bands I'm very familiar with and a lot that uh, I could use some getting more familiar with myself, but... Um, it's always nice to see uh, a slice of every part of Lexington's music scene, which just seems to be growing by the day. New bands and artists getting out there and performing. So it's always nice to see people from different slices and sections from uh, the the music community here uh, getting their recognition and being able to come together and celebrate together. Yeah, so I totally agree with you. And the diversity that was represented in the nominees list is something for us all to be very, very proud of. Absolutely. So, Whitney, what's your breakdown? And before I talk to David and kind of get of his assessment, what's your breakdown of what you, what did you enjoy most last night? What were some of your favorite moments? I always enjoy the live performances. They are continuously just the best part of the show. I don't think I can go anywhere else and sit in one room and get such a diverse um, array of local performances. I was a big fan of the African dance and drum. Me too. Did they yeah. kill it or what? Oh my really gosh, they killed it. Game. Listen, Everybody brought their A game, but yeah, they, they uh, were awesome. I told David last night, the, um, the dancers, the drums were amazing. The dancers, though, I've never seen dancers uh, perform with such joy that I could feel it like coming off the stage. It was incredible. I so agree with that. And I really, in addition to that, I really enjoyed hearing Clark sing last night. Oh, yes. And the Climb Every Mountain acapella. That takes a lot of courage to get on the stage, not only sing acapella, but to hit the notes that she hit last night. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we were in the Memorex uh, commercial. We probably would have had something breaking last night. It yeah. was just absolutely beautiful. And the other thing I really enjoyed, David, was the start with the national anthem and the cello player that you had. Yeah, Uni Choi Reich. Um, I met Uni years ago um, when she was uh, playing with Michael Jonathan on Wood Songs. And, um, uh, and I, I think... We, we met when I was when I was backing her, and then I've done a couple of projects with her husband Paul, um, and I just and I always want to kick the the show off right. So we've had a, a as diverse as any one show is. That's kind of what we've done with the with the national anthem each year. The first year it was Miles Oslin. Um Miles just knocked it out of the park, and then we had Alan Robinson, buddy of mine, guitar player, um, Berkeley grad, um, and just slayed it. Um, he had he had gone in and pre recorded backing tracks for the harmonies, mm-hmm. so he's playing to his own own tracks, and that was that was like stunning. And then last year we had uh, Jesse Lane Powell come in, um, and and just sing it straight. And then uh, and then Uni this year, and I, uh, she said, "How do you want me to do this?" And I and it's the same thing I tell everybody. I'm I'm not I don't micromanage talent. If I get one thing right in all of this, um, is that I is I get talented people and then I get the hell out of their way and I let them do what they do. Um, and I think she just killed it last night. It was amazing. And I think you killed it as well with that philosophy because that is just, it's, it's probably very hard to organize something of that magnitude and not feel like you want to have your hands in it and all over it at all times. And I think one of the wonderful things that you do is you just really kind of get the outline kind of developed, and then everybody just kind of takes off with their own unique gifts and talents. Yeah. It just really produces a wonderful experience for all of us. Well, there's, you know, I mean, I'm sure there there are people a lot smarter than me who could who could do it all, but... um but I'm I'm not that bright. <laughs> I'm not. Well, we disagree with so that. So <laughs> my my thing is finding talented people in all areas and just cutting them loose. You know, give them. You know, Ed Ed the, the very first year Ed Mackey came in from the Lexington Fashion Collaborative and said, Hey, I don't mean to butt in, but I see you're doing this awards thing. Do you have your presenter guides and and all that set? And I said, What's a presenter guide? <laughs> so I did, I, I've never done an award show. Um, and he came in, so all the all the lovely models, you know, he 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 got them outfitted with uh, local designers. All the dresses you saw last night are from local designers, made from you know locals and 
and uh, local models wearing them, and they come out and they're the presenter guides. And Ed has handled that. The Lexington Fashion Collaborative been on that, on top of that uh, since day one. Um, so I mean, so that talent as well as the musical talent as well as you know everything else that's going on, um, I try to just assemble talented people and then move. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm a ringleader. Like the, the perfect thing is for me just to sort of stand there and like let them go. <laughs> so. Well, it's wonderful. So you're not even 12 hours probably out of this, um, I guess, feeling you get after you've accomplished something of this magnitude. But yeah. why don't you just share with us what, what is your assessment of what happened last night? What were the highlights? What did you really enjoy seeing um, from being, you were backstage most of the time. I well, noticed. I was off to the side and running, running around the back, okay. and and we lost our stage manager. There was a there was a um, a, a death in the family, and oh. so at the last minute, um, we 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 lost Angelie and Marsha to weren't able to get there. So, which is why you saw me like That's running around on the stage were, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, I'm not up there on the stage as much, but um, so the uh, the father of one of our of our one of our presenter guides. Uh, was standing there and I said, you're a new stage manager, but he didn't have any stage experience. So we just, he was kind of helping the, the flow backstage and that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as highlights, you know, you're asking the wrong person there. Um, because the, I mean, I work real hard, like on the, on the diversity of the music performances, um, and hard on a lot of other, so to me, I mean, I'm, I'm just, there's too much of it going on and everybody brought their A game. I mean, all of it was a highlight to me. I mean, there was nobody fell down anywhere and it was all fantastic. Uh, Bill and Angie brought their A game. The, you know, the Twigs, our house band brought their A game. Every single music performance just knocked it out of the park. Um, you know, I, I, I never have to talk about the community aspect anymore because, you know, whether it was Gail Winters or Trip Bratton or DeBron Thomas or everybody who was going up was talking about, you know, Miles Isles and everybody was getting up talking about community and, and whatnot. I think Whitney said a little bit about that, too, as a matter of fact, if I recall. I mean, just so it's it, everybody's talking about the strength of the local uh, the local music scene. So all that, I was just like beaming the whole time. I mean, <laughs> you had a smile on your face. I, would, I had a smile on my face the whole time. Um, so, yeah, all of it, the Lifetime Achievement. Um, yeah, to speak to that if you don't you mind. Know. Can you go over those names and kind of give us your perspective on what that meant to you to have those people represented last night? Uh, that means the world to me. I, I, there's a lot of reasons. I had a lot of reasons for, for even doing this thing to begin with. Um, but the, the lifetime achievement part was never one of them when I started it. I just thought, well, that's probably something. But I tell you what, since day one, um, that has been a very moving part of the event for me. Um, I didn't, didn't anticipate that. <laughs> um, I just thought it would be good to honor people who'd been around for a long time and there hadn't been any kind of awards program. So there was no, I mean, they had recognition during their careers, of course, but, um, but sometimes it's nice to get that peer and community recognition. And, um, and so that, yeah, that, that part from day one has blown me away unexpectedly, but it has really, it's really moved me very, very much. So well, thank you for being here in this studio with us today to kind of talk about this just very important event. We're so looking forward to next year. And I'm sure for you, today probably starts the process of thinking about next year. Oh, I started thinking about next year about six, oh. eight weeks back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I think a lot of people don't really understand is that this is, an, this is a year-long process for you. And for everybody that participates in this. Yeah. And that we all start thinking about those things coming up. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, because it takes a lot of – there's a lot of moving parts on this. It's not like a normal show. I mean, it, it sort of is, I mean, it, but it's kind of like if you did a bunch of shows and kind of crammed them into one. So there's just a lot of moving parts, so it takes a little more pre-planning to, um, to pull one of these off smoothly. So. Well, wonderful. Yeah, well, but I, I did want to – I'm sorry, because no, I got, go I got side – I went off in the weeds because I haven't <laughs> slept much, and, and you'd asked me about to break down some of the Lifetime Achievement yes. um, recipients last night. We had Ron Crowder. Um, fantastic blues guy. He spent years in, in California and down in Memphis and did all sorts of stuff and then came up here, I don't know, 20, came back here like 20 years ago, I think it was. Um, and he's just fabulous. If you've not seen Ron live, you got to go see Ron Crowder live. Um, great, uh, great heart player too. Great blues heart player. Um, we had them, he, we had him up. In fact, last year we had a, a blues blowout with, uh, with four incredible guys, including one of our guys who was on stage last night, G Busy. Um, and then of course, Sarah Holroyd, who just, I, I had been unaware of her until a couple of years ago. And, and that to me, she's sort of the perfect, 
um, I don't know how, how do I say it? What, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just just the, the one of the reasons we do this because we all think we know the music industry so well and none of us do at all. Not I mean we know our our slice of it, um, but you look and go how once you see her her whole story and everything twenty six years of and you how do I how did I not know about this person? <laughs> and every time you turn a page, you're look, you're learning more about what she's done. I mean, I, I'm not even going to attempt to list mm-hmm. everything that she's done here, but. Um, but to me, she was kind of the perfect summation of that, you know, because it's like, you know, if you're saying who is that, then it kind of proves the point that none of us have a, a grasp on how deep and, and rich this this music community truly is. And just be, and just to kind of piggyback on that, sure. I think one of those reasons is, is when she did retire from music education at the University of Kentucky, she went right into nursing. Yeah, she did a few years and over so, at the UK, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so she became a nurse, and so there was that other gap. Yeah, you know, yeah. that probably just a more quieter type of career that doesn't get a lot of applause. You're not on stage. Sure, sure. But she really combined the um, the qualities of music and how they can heal patients. And I yeah. thought that was a very, uh, just a wonderful thing about her. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you, you can continue with the other oh, one. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, T.D. Young. And I was really, I was so thrilled about T.D. because T.D. has won the, the Blues Award every year. He's owned his own club for decades. He has been uh, chosen as a, as a winner. I don't, I don't know if he's ever had a break in years um, representing the area and, and the, um, the Kentucky Blues Society in, uh, in Memphis for the, for the International um, Blues Challenge. Um, and he was finalist this year. So he had to, um, and every year he almost misses because the, the two events are like so close together. So he, he literally like leaps in the car and dashes back just in time for the awards. And so for him to, to come in after all that and get the, uh, and get the lifetime achievement, that, that was really awesome too. Um, and then uh, Montgomery Gentry, of course, Troy um, dying earlier. Uh, well, last year now, um, like I think it was back in September, if I'm not mistaken. So it really kind of fresh, and and that was really great that that uh, that his daughter um, could get down to um, to accept the award on on his behalf and say a few words. That that was really that was a special moment too. So yeah, very special moment hearing "This Is My Town" played by the Twig and Berries last night. Yeah, the yeah, during their well. tribute. Yeah, that was awesome. So. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. And I'd like everybody here to give David a round of applause for what he's done for this community. And we're going to be back after these messages, and you'll be able to hear a selection from pop winner Brother Smith right after these messages.
secrets in the sun. And you were just listening to the sounds of Brother Smith, winner of the 2018 Pop Act for the Lexington Music Awards last night. It was really good to see them last night to receive their award. And Matt, what are your comments about Brother Smith? Um, I've only on I've only seen them once or twice, but they've been a lot of fun. They're a, a very big party kind of band, from what it seems like, from the impression I've got. Or they've got that very big band kind of vibe. Um, which is nice because there's so much going on, which at times can almost seem overwhelming, but it's also nice because you kind of hear different things every time because you kind of, one instrument will stand out a little more and you kind of, it kind of makes it a little different every time you hear it, but it's keeps you on your toes and it keeps it fun and exciting and Brother Smith's a great band. Yeah, and I agree. And Whitney, you've had Wes several times on Songwriters in the Round, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember first meeting Wes. My family adores Wes Smith, and uh, they call him Thor. He's easy to adore, isn't he? (laughs) He is. He's just like this giant of a man, and he has this really sweet personality. It's very contradicting, but uh, super talented. One of my favorite local writers, without a doubt. Thank you. We are back, and you're listening to Overtones, hosted by me, Renee Collins, on Lexington Community Radio, 93.9 WLXU, And along with Whitney Akey and Matt Wickstrom, um, we are talking still about Lexington Music Awards. And we also have in the studio today the lovely and talented Vanessa Davis. And I'm so excited about having her with us. Yay. Yay. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Well, Vanessa is a music fixture here on the Lexington Music scene as well. And Warren and I first saw you at the Twisted Cork. Mm -hmm. However, I have a feeling you've been at other venues than that. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm pretty new so on this scene, so to be heard a fixture, I mean, or to be called a fixture, that's <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Thank you for that. Um, I I used to do more performing um, back. I, I'm from Canada, and when I was living in Canada, I did a lot of performing. And then when I moved here, I was really focusing on building up um, a music studio and teaching music and musical theater um, through the University of Kentucky. And so uh, most of my time was devoted to that. And at some point in time, I was just really missing writing. And there was one year that went by that I realized I hadn't written an entire, I hadn't written a song in that entire year. And I was like, that has got to change. So I kind of just um, rebalanced my priorities and decided to make more time um, to be a performer and to be a writer. And it's, I mean, it's the best change. And I'm still teaching. Um... But to be able to give myself permission to balance and do something that makes me so happy and that's such a, a big part of who I am inside um, has been great. So I've really only been playing around Lexington for, you know, maybe a year. I'd say it's it's still pretty well, we fresh. We must have got you when you were new. So, yeah, very, <laughs> yes. So it's, it's exciting how many connections um, there's been and how many people I've met. I mean, even since, since nominations were announced um, for the Lexis, I've probably met, you know, twice as many or three times as many people as I knew before all of the names were announced. And just to be able to, you know, for example, I'd play an open mic at the Twisted Cork and half the people that are playing are nominees and some of them I had never met. And so, oh, I recognize your name and, you know, get to to connect and and meet other people and start collaborating and connecting. So it's been great. Well, you're a really great example of networking. Yeah. Oh, my And I just think you do a wonderful job at that. And you have a very magnetic personality. (laughs) And she's just so sweet and likable. (laughs) I just want to just go up and hug her most of the time. I like hugs. But I mean, (laughs) the fact that you've just been here a year makes that just all the more impressive that you've been able to kind of like collaborate with so many people but I think it speaks to the music scene here in Lexington oh it's been so welcoming I mean I can't thank the Twisted Cork and Whitney and the NSAI enough for just welcoming me welcoming me and I feel like I I joined a a really kind and open-hearted club when I joined um, the Nashville Songwriters Association here in Lexington and that's kind of been um, sort of my end. That's how I got to know who who is around and who's writing. And um, it's it really I call it my monthly therapy group that I go to. It's my music therapy to go to that. And and through that, I've I've learned about so many different people in the community. And 
Yeah. <laughs> well, Whitney, let me just kind of ask you, too, because you are, are you the president of this chapter that's well, here? Well, <laughs> not the president, <laughs> but uh, I am a co-chapter uh, coordinator with Ray Adams for the Lexington chapter of NSAI, which is Nashville Songwriters Association International. And it is, um, I'm not a big fan of going to Nashville and putting your money into any type of organization. There's there's a lot going on down there that you can waste your money. I'm a huge fan of NSAI. There are um, many very famous songwriters who are members of it, and they kind of lobby for the rights of songwriters. Mm -hmm. But um, locally, we get together every third Monday at Willis Music um, from 6 to 8, and we share and we offer like a workshop of... um, peer critique and we help each other grow that's the main thing for our Lexington chapter we want everyone to grow in their writing but Vanessa is a great part of it yeah we love having her wonderful Vanessa do you have something to sing for us today I always have something to sing Uh, that's awesome always if I can go down a rabbit hole just for a second sure I'm from uh well until I was 12 years old, I lived in a small town in Canada, and we were known as kind of like the local music family. So I had to sing for my Halloween candy. Like, we would knock on a door, and they would be like, oh, it's the Nelson family. Well, you got to sing for your candy. So I always have a song to sing. Well, we'll have to get some candy while she's singing, everyone. So this is Vanessa Davis, um, 2018 nominee, a uh, double, right, for yeah. Pop Act and, and Music, music Educator. educator yes. So Wonderful. All right, should I introduce a song? Or sure. Just, okay. Go <laughs> ahead. This is a, a song I don't play out very often because it's one of my favorites, and I kinda, um, it kind of, it not only takes the right environment and the right state of mind on my part, but I don't want to overplay it because I never want to get sick of it, but it's called Honest and Brave, and it's a funny thing because when you meet me, you think, oh... I'm I'm not quiet at all, and I'm, you know, outgoing, and I love meeting people. I love talking to them. I always have something to say. Um, but on the inside, I, I actually have really struggled with voicing my opinions. And so this song came out of the concept, and it's actually the last line of the song. If only life were a song, then I would... I would always know what to say Um, because a lot of times I feel like, well, I don't know how to confront that situation, so I'm just going to write a song about it instead. So this is just kind of about that inner struggle and and growing to learn to voice my opinion. I'd rather not speak my mind I'd rather not speak at all What if I come up short in learning to stand tall I am trying I am not denying of my thoughts and feelings take them right down from the shelf when openness eludes me I know it can't be all that far cause I'm honest with my I'd rather not leap too far (laughs) I'd rather not leap at all What if I miss the bar Then I might free fall I am learning I am not finished journeying When I'm by myself I dust off my thoughts and feelings Take them right down from the shelf When bravery eludes me 
I know it's not just some fictional thing Cause I'm fearless when I sing When it comes to debates or leaps of faith I neglect to know what to do but give me keys and melodies well that dialect rings true that dialect I'm used to if I could apply what I know of notes and rhythms. I dust off my thoughts and feelings, form the words and do something with them. And nothing would elude me. I know I wouldn't be getting it wrong if life were a song. Vanessa Davis, and I agree, if only life were a song. (laughs) So we will be back right after these messages to hear more from Vanessa Davis. back on Overtones, WLXU 93.9, Lexington Community Radio. And we're welcoming welcoming back Vanessa Davis to the studio. And Vanessa, uh, Warren and I were watching Grand Night for Singing, UK's (laughs) Grand Night for Singing. And we are credits watchers. So we (laughs) stay and we like watch the whole thing. And there's so many recognizable names when you see some of these performances. But we were real surprised to see (laughs) your name come across in the credits. So tell us about your involvement. Vanessa is very involved um, in the theater. And I see a lot of that come out in your performing. Yeah. Um, Yes. Well, I was I was raised performing and um, we actually have this um, festival that goes across Canada. Um, It's called the Music Festival and it's it's a very big thing and it's um, it's competitions, but it's really, you know, more about um, learning and growing and it's for very young children all the way up through your 20s. And uh, you can it's it's based in classical music, but there's musical theater categories as well. And so I grew up studying classical music, but my favorite was always the musical theater. I just always loved it, getting to do your own choreography and wear a costume and everything. And so um, music theater has always been a big part of my life and, and a great love of mine. And so um, when I heard about Grand Night for Singing, I was like, oh, I've got to get involved in that. And so I've actually been in the cast twice but I um, what I usually do is I help music direct the children's numbers because they'll have one or two children's numbers in the show and this last year with it being oh goodness do you know what anniversary it was it was a big one of Grand Night and I I didn't know you were going to ask me this so I'm not prepared but they had they had quite a few numbers that the children were in and so it was an honor get to, to get to help put together that many numbers I want to say they were in four or five different numbers and by children I mean there was a younger um group and then there was the teenagers and um so yeah I mean it's it's been so much fun I love music directing and I love teaching private lessons and group lessons and so it was right up my alley I just really enjoy 
helping with that. So well, wonderful. We're so yeah. thankful to have you in the community, Vanessa. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> could you sing one more for us? <laughs> sure. My request list. My request <laughs> list is long, folks. But <laughs> I think we picked one out that's just perfect. <laughs> yes, this one does tend to get requested. This is called "Ex Boyfriend," also known as the Boyfriend Song, which is usually what people call it when they ask me for it. My one advantage is my heart My one advantage is my sense of right and wrong But knowing that I want to get along with everyone You took advantage of my heart You took advantage of my sense of right and wrong We never fought but we sure didn't get along When it's said and done Friend. Number one, you sure did damage to my heart Making out with girls in random bars And getting pulled over when I was in your car That wasn't cool And then when we were apart You got a second girlfriend That was pretty rough Needless to say, I'd had enough And so we were through Number two. Oh, what am I thinking? Why would I choose this hell over bliss? It must be in the water I'm drinking, cause I can do better than this. I know it wasn't the distance between our cars and houses that drove us apart. There was something else tugging on your heart that wanted you to be free. It was that you had a mistress I mean, come on, you had her lined up Anyway, when we broke up You didn't even take a day To get over me Oh, 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 ex-boyfriend Number three Oh, 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 what am I thinking? Why would I choose this hell over bliss? It must be When you fight for love and glory You can't wait around for somebody to get a clue And fight for you So you take good care of your heart Listen intently when it tells you right from wrong Find your own ending, your own song Find your own door And when you're falling apart Hold out for head over heels, not hell over bliss When you think about it, it all comes down to this And nothing more Then there won't be ex-boyfriend Number four <laughs> No, uh, oh, ex-boyfriend Number four Great job, Vanessa Davis, everyone. And Vanessa, where are you appearing in the upcoming weeks? Oh, goodness. Um, I am doing a show with a very special organization um, called The Girl Project, um, which is for high school girls to have a, a safe place to find their voice and to express that through various uh, mediums of art, um, particularly theater, but also um, spoken word poetry, music, and visual art. And um, they have this spin off project called Voices Heard, which is kind of next generation girl project. So it's for the teenagers to get involved in as well, but all age groups and men as well. There are some male performers who participate in, in Voices Heard, in, in promoting you know gender equality and um, a platform for everyone to be able to voice their opinion in a safe environment. And I am playing um, an event kind of that. That's a, a precursor. They have events going on all weekend, and I want to say it's March uh, 23rd, I think. is I'd have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure that that's it. And then they have other events going on on the 24th and 25th. But I'm playing at um, the Summit, 
which is a really cool new-ish venue um, nice. in in the barn, which has like that atomic noodle and all the different places that you can go and like get some food and listen. And it's myself and another artist in the area called Rainbow Star, who's going to be doing that kind of singer-songwriter spot. Um, so in case I'm getting the dates wrong or for more information, I'm sure you can look up Voices Heard or The Girl Project on Facebook. You can also look up my page because I've got the event listed and I'll, I'll be posting details as we go along. And my page on Facebook is Vanessa Davis Music and Theater. Well, thank you so much for being thank with you. us today. And we are going to be back after these messages. Family Band with Marie's Wedding slash Cooley's Reel slash Carried Out of Buckley's and Al White on lead vocals. And that brings us into the final portion of Overtones today. And last week on Overtones, Ruth McLean of the McLean Family Band visited with us. And last week, the band officially kicked off their 50th anniversary tour on the Red Barn Live stage. And we learned so much about this amazing family, including their years of traveling the world um, with the sponsorship of the U.S. State Department, which was a very interesting story. And they also have a picture book that kind of like captures all these pictures of being in Africa, Alaska, almost virtually everywhere. They are just such wonderful treasures to the state of Kentucky. And what a just true gift we have. And Warren, the line producer of Red Barn Radio, is also here with us in Kind of break it down for us on what we got to see and what we'll get to hear, I believe, this weekend on WLXU on Sunday morning. Well, what can you say about the McLean Family Band? I mean, 50 years <clears throat> in the music business, in the bluegrass genre, you know, they're, they're just shining examples of what the music of Kentucky can bring to the world. You know, they're just, they're ambassadors, really, for the state. And uh, we were 
completely honored to have them kick off their you know 50th anniversary tour on uh, the Red Barn Radio stage. Um, they they brought in some some new tunes that we hadn't heard before, and uh, you know some old favorites, and uh, it was just a, a great great show. Well, wonderful. Thanks, Warren. Um, and just to kind of I guess segue into the next segment that was red barn recap which is a feature we will have where we will cover who was on red barn last week and now we're moving into red barn roundup and this week we will feature the amazing and might i add 2018 lexington music award winners for rock act and ryan i'm sure you got that text from me last night that i sent you oh yeah how did you feel about that that's great yeah we uh we're very happy to have that but uh yeah, you know, I was at a show last night, so... Yeah. They were performing at the Burl last night, and it was really happening there, too, from what oh, I understand. Yeah. It's, it's happening all over town. It sure is, and another one of the wonderful things we have in the city. And also in the studio, we have Matt Wickstrom, as I mentioned earlier, of Wix Picks, which airs on Lexington Community Radio Wednesday mornings from 9 to 10, and we're so glad to have you. And Matt, you are quite familiar with, and you are also a huge fan of Magnolia Boulevard. Yes. And you've also done some writing about them. So what do you think they have that stands out so much in the music community here in Lexington? Um, they just... Maggie. They, <laughs> yes. That Maggie. helps. Maggie is a phenomenal vocalist and just has an amazing stage, stage presence that just draws you in. Um, but I think overall, um, I think the whole band's just very tight-knit. They're very good at communicating um, on and off the stage through their music and all that they've just got a very good sound they've worked hard on it um and they keep getting better every show i see them i feel like every show they're pulling out some new song or they're trying something out new with a song that they've been playing with for a while and it turns out great you know yes but they're constantly getting better um and they are absolutely deserving of the rock band award they got there one of my favorite bands in Lexington at the moment. I totally agree. And so this week, Wednesday night at Red Barn Radio, we will present Magnolia Boulevard on Red Barn Live. And they are a five-piece band built in Lexington, Kentucky, with a variety of musical backgrounds. This group has come together seamlessly on a common sound, balancing the line between blues, funk, and rock and roll. And we have in the studio with us Ryan Allen on keyboard and Greg Irwin on guitar. And I will let, I'll turn over the microphone to you all. And first of all, tell us who's in the rest of your band. And also, let's just kind of get some, uh, I guess, feedback on how you all formed, how you all came to be. Uh, well, you know, like we said, we've got Maggie Noel on vocals and uh, Todd Copeland on drums, John Roberts on bass. As far as how it got together, uh, you know, it, it was a, a really organic thing. Uh, I guess I was one of the last guys to get added. Uh, Greg and me were playing with Chris Bentley at I'm Willie's. I remember the other day when that was. Yeah. That had to be in January. And that's actually the first time that we, that we met was on stage. Like, yeah. We didn't actually talk until after the show. But, uh, well, officially met. Then yeah. We, got to, we had figured out that we had met like three or four years ago in Jackson. Yeah. Really? Brett, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was playing with a band called Horton Holler, and uh, <coughs> Greg was playing with yeah, some somebody else. Yeah. And uh, we were both at this festival in Jackson, and, and apparently had talked backstage. I didn't remember until until recently. We got to talking about guitars or something. Yeah. yeah. And you had an aha moment, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that guy. Seems like I was doing something with intonation. That strap, man, it would always slip. Yeah. Every show I would have to mess with. But yeah, we uh, I moved to Lexington in 2016, January, I believe, and had a friend tag me in the singer-songwriters night, which I'm not a singer-songwriter per se, just do my best to play. And uh, I was dying to get out and play, so I went, and as luck would have it, Maggie was there, her and Case, and uh, about a month later she sent me a message saying that she would like to get together and jam and I played a show at the old Cosmic Charlie's I think two years ago. You remember when it snowed like the only decent snow like yes. eight or ten inches? It was that night. Um, That's always the night you're going to have a big performance, yeah, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I got a call from uh, from Ishii Wooten. Ishii, Ishii. I had the hardest time saying Ishii. But um, 
Anyways, that's how Todd and I met. But it all just kind of came together. Long story short, um, it just uh, it just happened, and we're we're really proud of it. And just try to try to write a better song today than we did yesterday, and just try to roll with it. Try to take it on down the road, you know. Wonderful, and I'm proud of it. Greg, you're fairly new to the Lexington music scene as yeah. well, and I, from what I understand, you're very grateful to be here. Oh man, yeah, I love it. I mean, there's so much. Vanessa's going on. also new to the music cool. scene. About new and year. grateful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there's so much, so much good going on. You know, we're not playing sports. It's not a competition, and we all support each other. And you know, it's just everybody comes out to everyone else's shows. We're all friends with each other. We all, like I said, we all support each other. Um, that's really the thing is going to live shows, you know, because obviously it's much better with the crowd there, but um, especially when people are enjoying the music and that seems to be happening, so that's cool. And then plus, you know, like Saturday we played at Southgate House and it uh, was tripping Roots, us, uh, Brother Smith and Zach Longoria from Louisville. And uh, I would have been totally starstruck at that point. Man, it was great. But it's, you know, it's like just Lexington, Louisville bands, Cincinnati bands, we're all, it's a great thing happening right now. Everybody's working together, and that's really the main thing. You know, I think that's why, I think that's why it's, it is what it is. But it's, it's a really good thing. It's great. Totally agree. Good to be a part of it. So, Ryan, my question for you, is there one instrument that you do not play? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is He's such playing. a master He'll of a lot a of different yet. instruments. And every time I see him on Facebook, he is experimenting with some new instruments. So walk us through some of the instruments that you, I guess, started off with and what the progression has been as you add these on. Well, Leon Russell never claimed to be a piano player. And I don't either. He said he's just a good actor. And I'm, I'd like to think that I'm a pretty good actor, too. But, uh, you act like you know what you're doing, people. Play. Yeah. That's 99% exactly. of success, by the way. Good. Yeah. Advice. But, you know, I, I've got an uncle who's in a band called the Mojo Filter Kings. And uh, they, you know, played a whole lot back in probably the 90s around here. And he taught me how to play guitar. Uh, and from that, I kind of taught myself to play piano. And uh, really, it was just... Well, after that, you know, mandolin and some other stuff, but, you know, I really think of myself as a guitar player, and everything else is just kind of for fun, but, uh, yeah, mainly I just play piano at the house, just because it's, you know, I enjoy doing it, but, uh, turns out there's not a whole lot of keyboardists in Lexington, and then there's a, there is a whole lot of guitar players, so I'm getting all the keyboard gigs, but... Well, we are glad that you are getting the keyboard gigs. Well, me too. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Absolutely. And also, thank you, Matt Wickstrom, for being with us today. Um, you can hear more from Magnolia Boulevard on that show on Wednesday morning, right? 9 to 10? Yes, I'll have Maggie, Greg, and I believe Ryan, maybe, as well in the studio with me for an hour of live music and uh, chat. Wonderful. And I'm again thankful for David McLean for being with us here today, Whitney Akey, and the beautiful and talented Vanessa Davis. And Vanessa is going to take us out here, L not literally take us out, but <laughs> take us out of the show. And I just want to um, just say that next week on Overtones, along with Red Barn Recap and Roundup, we're going to add a couple of different features. Um, so we're going to talk, if time presents, my first installment of Talk About My Generation, which is going to bring in a younger um, performer and a more, I just let's just say more seasoned or tenured in musician and we're going to kind of combine them together and talk about what each generation can learn off of each other one of the wonderful things when i go to a magnolia boulevard i get to hear songs that i know and from our generation and i think that's just such a beautiful thing that you do for our generation um we're also going to feature an installment called this is my town where we're going to feature songwriters who write about different cities towns in socio-economic situations in kentucky so i will have joanna james here with us the band um to break it all down for us so um all on next week's show of overtones on lexington community radio this is renee collins i'm working in concert each and every week to remind you that when words fail music speaks have a great week filled with music and love goodbye everyone and let's hear it from vanessa davis Shy little violet, don't 
help me, oh yeah Cause I'm changing my tune Used to be afraid of my own voice Afraid to make my own choice But I'm changing my tune Oh, I'm changing my tune Oh, I'm changing my tune Carry the weight of the world on my shoulders I'm wiser and older So I'm changing my tune Looking around for yesterday, but it's gone I got a new song, so I'm changing my tune Oh, I'm changing my tune Oh, I'm changing my tune The road is along Might as well invite some friends to come along Might as well pass the time Singing a song Oh, oh, so sing along Oh, oh, I got the rain clothes in my pocket Who would have thought it? Just by changing my tune The sunshine is wrapped around my finger Cause I'm a thinker And thought of changing my tune So